What is up, guys? Welcome on back to TK's Garage. And we have some inside information about Stellantis and just how bad these third quarter earnings are going to be as they drop today. You guys are seeing the video today. We'll probably do another update on it November 1st as the official earnings are going to drop. And I'm probably going to drop this super late or super early in the morning for you guys on October 31st. But, um, I want to get into it. The, the total U.S. sales decline um, declined 20% year over year with 305,294 vehicles sold from July through September. This was a decline from 380,000 vehicles sold you know, in the same period of 2023, all right? Their only good note that they have in these earnings is that their U.S. market share increased from 7.2% in July to 8% in September. So less than 1%. And a lot of that is on insane lease deals on like Dodge Hornets and other vehicles that they can't sell. Inventory was reduced by 50,000 vehicles from the end of the second quarter. I don't know if that's good or bad. I, I mean, you really want to see a lot more sales, but I, I get that they dropped 50,000 in, in inventory. And most of that's going to be on Ram, you know, Ram trucks, leftover chargers, challengers, things of that nature that they were blowing out from uh, 2023 and still sitting on, you know, two and three year old vehicles. Shipments in the uh, enlarged Europe region fell by 100,000 vehicles or 17%. That's bad. Maserati was the worst. It was a disaster for Maserati. Consolidated uh, deliveries for Maserati were expected to fall 60%, over half. They only sold 2,100 vehicles. Damn. Production cuts came in. You got more than 100,000 units Uh of the decline in North American shipments were due to pre-announced production cuts. That's Stellantis shutting down factories and assembly plants, what we're like exactly what we're seeing right now from Stellantis. Uh, brand performance, let's get into that uh, key aspect here. All brands except Fiat. Listen to that. All brands except Fiat experienced sale declines with Chrysler and Dodge seeing more than 40% reductions. Damn. But that's not all. Remember Ram was like highest quality. They, they keep boasting like Ram's number one in quality. Ram's no, 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 it's not. Not anymore. And their sales of trucks, the thing, the bread and butter for them, Jeep and Ram, Ram fell 19%. In the third quarter, Jeep sales were off about 6% year over year. Jeep, not as bad, but Ram falling 20% like this in a quarter after the abysmal disaster of a quarter we saw in the second, which really destroyed the stock price. Um... They also have announced plans to reduce output and offer big discounts to revive its U.S. business. I just don't see it. Um, I just don't see it. And it's looking like profit-wise, we're going to see around the same or even a bigger drop than what we saw in the second quarter. So what does that mean? Pay attention to the stock price all day tomorrow. I tell you that because when they publish those earnings around, what is it, 12 in the afternoon, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, their local time, you're going to see a precipitous drop in that stock price. And let's look and see where it is right now. Um, I know it's not high. It was already down almost a percent today. So it's at $13.23 and after our trading, and look, the same information I'm getting, the big money money guys are getting too, as it dropped down to an after hours trading as low as 13 bucks already. And you can see, let's see if I can get this on the screen for you guys. 
you can see that massive spike going straight down. And that's because the same people that give me inside information, you don't think they shop that information or they give it to other people like people that work at CNBC and Bloomberg and some of these other places. I get some of that same information. And that's why we're seeing such a massive down because they already have some of the internal um internal information so very interesting to me um and the reason why you know it's bad too though is you see stuff like this and, and i'll and i'll drop this up here on the screen i'll put this up here on the screen uh Forster AP Fondum trims stock holdings in Stellantis. You're seeing some of these massive stockholders start dumping before those earnings publish later today. And they're doing it because they know. Uh, Forster, and I'll put, I'll put it up here, like I said on the screen, Forster AP Fondum decreased its stakes in Stellantis by 42.3% in the third quarter. They dumped almost half of the stock they had with them. According to the company in its most recent 13F filing with the FCC, the fund owed uh, the fund owned 241,659 shares of the company's stock after selling 176,885 shares during the quarter. Uh, the their holdings currently right now were worth three point. 395 million at the most recent quarter. And here's the thing, there's a lot of other institutional investors and other uh, big holders, uh, shareholders of this stock after what happened in the second quarter and not seeing anything positive coming from the third. I can tell you now, I, I talked to two um, of these private equity, these private companies uh, that hold massive amount of shares at Stellantis. And I've ha I had an hour and a half conversation with one where they said, had they fired Carlos Tavares or had they moved him out before the earnings, they probably would have stayed, uh, you know, held Pat and stayed with the stock or held the stock. But because they haven't made that move and they don't look like they're, they're correcting to what the market is showing them, people are now dumping it. And as more people and more of these big, massive investment firms start dropping the shares like this, just dumping them, guess what that does to the price? Couple that, because that just got published an hour ago, couple that with what's going on with Stellantis' earnings and what's going to drop today, and what do you get? Stock disaster. Now, I don't know if it's going to fall below 10 bucks. I don't know if it's going to hit 11, but I surely expect it to lose like 8 to 10%. That's my guess. That's my guess. Just because even though they cut and they can show some revenue because they, they did issue some incentives on some vehicles, it's not enough to dig them out of the hole. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. It's earnings disaster day. <laughs> I know you guys are like, TK, you're so petty. It is, though. It's earnings disaster day. And Tavares and Elkin and the rest of the board have literally done this to themselves. They have nobody to, nobody to blame but themselves for it. And they can do all the musical chairs they want to do with the executives. But until, until Tavares is out of there and they get John Elkin off of being chairman of the board, nothing's going to change except maybe bankruptcy. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Give the video a big thumbs up if you like what I do. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, stay petty, my friends.